When I was young, my father always told me I would be the greatest wrestler in the world. I knew what I was meant to do, what I was born to do, what I was bred to do, and that's be a professional wrestler. I breathe wrestling, it's in my blood. I have kind of a confidence that I carry about myself because I know I'm good. What's good, everybody? My name is The Generation 71. Thank you for tuning back into Behind the Scenes of the WWE. Today, we're going to go behind the scenes, haha, <laughs> get it, uh, with uh, Randy Orton um, to see exactly who he is as a person more than what he shows on his on screen persona. Because, in case you didn't already know, what you see on screen isn't necessarily what you see in real life. Who would have thought? <laughs> Um, I will say though, just with everything that Ra Randy Orton is, either as a you know person or as his on-screen persona, it's kind of all wrapped up in controversy, which is crazy. Um, just to talk a little bit about his on-screen persona, though, of course, uh, he's had two major gimmicks throughout his whole career. I say major because it's what he's mainly had. He hasn't really diverted to anything else. But as the legend killer Randy Orton, where he goes around killing legends, people who've established themselves in the company. And as the Apex Predator Randy Orton, which just means he's a badass and he will beat up everybody, you know, anybody who stands in his way, essentially. Um, but as I was saying, essentially his career is just kind of wrapped up in, in controversy. And I hope you like that. This is gonna actually going to be kind of like a preview of the Extreme Rules match coming out. I think it was this Sunday. I hope it's this Sunday. Anyways, uh, I keep getting off topic here. But yeah, essentially his whole career and his personal life is kind of wrapped up in controversy. It's no secret that... Randy Orton is a fantastic heel, probably one of the better heels of this generation. Why? Well, a lot of people say that he's a jerk in real life. And I think that's true for most of us that, yes, we do have a, I guess, a likable side and an unlikable side. But let's just say Randy Orton, for a good majority of his younger career, or I guess his amateur career, rookie career, his career at the beginning of his career, um, that was more based on him being a jerk but he was really good at it because he was actually a jerk uh, i think he actually stated in the interview a couple of times that when he was younger he w he actually had this cockiness about him the fact that you know he had this swagger he had this just thought that he was better you know that something that he did didn't smell if you know what i mean and in some ways i guess he had every right to think that but it was it just didn't really sit well with all the other competitors that he was working with because of course in this type of industry you have to show respect um, but it seems like this oh kind of gosh. you know diverged from possibly his childhood because now he's kind of kind of looked at as a frat boy for the most part um, his childhood was nothing like that I mean he was one of the kids that actually got picked on for most of his life didn't wasn't really all that popular um, he did some amateur wrestling and I believe it was junior high and high school um, and that was the most of his athletic abilities right there um so he wasn't popular by any means he isn't the person that we met today but it always seemed like he was the um brunt of being bullying so it's kind of interesting to see it's like well maybe if that what that's what it was where he kind of transformed to somebody who did or was bullied by or transforming to somebody who did the bullying if that makes any sense because there's also um uh, numerous reports of when he was actually first introduced to raw or yeah when he got brought up to raw that he actually tormented a bunch of people hazing and, and that included divas um but that also could be attributed to his very very short career as a marine um he actually wanted to be a marine before he actually came to the wwe uh, because he wanted to feel like he was a part of something. Uh, but like his words stated, once he actually um, got out of boot camp, started actually working on the field, it was just like it was boot camp all over again. There was just a bunch of hazing. So I think with Randy Orton, it was just he had a, he had a lot of pent-up aggression, pent-up rage that he had to deal, through, uh, deal with. And then we, he got that taste of success, got that taste of, man, you know, I'm the guy. I'm the guy that everybody's looking towards. 
it kind of ended up snowballing into something that wasn't all that pleasant to watch, if that makes sense. Um, even as of now, like, there are some reports that Randy Orton sometimes just kind of go, goes after somebody, and then there's a bunch of people saying, yeah, he does have a short temper. Which makes sense when you kind of have the childhood that he had, um, as well as just the fact that you're performing in front of millions and millions of people, either in audiences or as well as, you know, on TV. That pressure kind of gets to you after a while. Uh, but as I was saying, yeah, he actually um, entered the Marines before he actually became a WWE superstar. And this is the thing that I thought was kind of interesting. Um, if you guys don't know much about Randy Orton and John Cena's rivalry, a lot of the ra rivalries based on John Cena was this kid from nowhere who wanted to be a wrestler, and how Randy Orton was pretty much bred to do this, that he wanted to do it since day when he was born. Which, as a matter of fact, is actually kind of complete opposite for the most part. If anything, John Cena wanted to do it since the day he was born, and Randy Orton kind of just fell into it um, once he actually left the Marine Corps. Um, it was stated like he was 19, he was living in his parents' basement, and one day he was actually started watching Raw. I was like, I wonder if I could actually do that. I wonder if I could actually follow in my father's and grandfather's footsteps. So one day he decided to go with his dad. Um, the WWE uh, was actually in his hometown, so they start, decided to actually look into it to see if that was something that he would be able to actually contribute to. And which is kind of amazing too. He was part of, I guess you could say, an all-star draft class, <laughs> as you, I guess you could say, because he got into a developmental, I guess, ring. It's OVW, so that's where a lot of the developmental people that need to hone their skills end up going towards. Um, he was a part of the developmental class of Dave Batista, who became a really big superstar. Uh, John Cena, which obviously he's become a major superstar, as well as Brock Lesnar, which, I mean, again, another major superstar. So he's kind of like that ultimate draft class, like with uh, John Elway and, man, I already forgot the other <laughs> the other, um, the other quarterback in that draft class, man. Just shows how much I pay attention to that. But, yeah, so it is crazy to see kind of how Randy Orton is. I mean, a lot of people attribute his aggression to his childhood, not having the most pleasant of childhood. But what I think is interesting is, again, this is a guy who achieved fame who didn't necessarily know what he wanted to do all his life it kind of just stumbled into it so it's kind of interesting to see where a lot of other people have always been saying you know you should know what you want day of you know if you really want it you'll want it as soon as you know about it i guess or when you're younger you know when you're a baby this is what you want but that's not necessarily true with randy Orton. i think he's a prime example of that so um, last but not least, it's kind of interesting to see Randy Orton and Seth Rollins kind of wrestle right now, um, as well as at Extreme Rules, because with a lot of the politics that happened in the background, if you guys didn't know, Triple H handpicked Randy Orton to actually have him learn the craft uh, directly from him. With Randy Orton, didn't necessarily go as smoothly as people would have liked i mean of course he just had a lot of problems he had to work through you know drug abuse problems if you know what i mean with steroids mainly um but now triple h seems to have picked seth rollins um as someone that he wants to kind of grow into that superstar that we all kind of expected from him but as well as in triple h's eyes expected from randy orton but I don't think anybody can say that Randy Orton did become a great superstar. I think he's become a major superstar. Uh, definitely one of the greats of all time. And I don't think anybody can really say anything different, to be honest. But all right, guys, I'm going to cut it there for now. Thank you for tuning in. If you guys um, have any feedback about the series at all, definitely leave it in the comment section down below. Use hashtag um, Randy Orton. Why not? We'll, we'll do another hashtag thing later. Uh, but yeah, anyways, this has been the Generation 71, and we'll catch you guys later.